All right, so introduce. today we're going to talk about panels. Um, we've talked about panels a little bit before, but the biggest trick to working with panels is first um, accepting the imperfection that is panels. Exactly. Whoa! Turn your volume down. Okay, so panels, because of the way they're printed, even the, because they're digitally printed, remember we've talked before about the fact that Cotton is an organic product that shifts, shifts and changes and over time because it's woven. You know, this is not a plastic mat. It's going to change. You can stretch, you can tug, it's going to change a little bit. Well, in the process of being fed through a machine to be, to be printed on, it might have gotten tugged a little bit. And then another machine to be rolled onto a roll, and then another, another machine to be rolled on a bolt from the roll and folded. And then we unfold it and try and Cut it straight and so it's not it a square not a square or a rectangle or a rectangle so how do we take something that's not a square or a rectangle and make it a rectangle okay that's the real question that's the real sense. question and I think the first step to addressing that is to understand what our limitations are yes. like it's not a square I need to expect that and plan to work around that yes so, like, you guys have seen me do a couple of really quick and easy panel quilts lately. This one, of course, this is our Yellowstone panel with a narrow border. This is actually part of the panel. I didn't make put that border on. This narrow border and this border, and that's it. A narrow border like this makes it extra easy to work with, which is awesome because then you've got wiggle room. And I did the same thing with um, the Bloom and Grow panel. So, same thing. The, this navy blue was part of the panel has the ma ma magenta, magenta stop border that I put on and then the outer border. So now this one, there's not really a border to the panel itself. It's just that the panel ends and when you looked at the fabric, it was, it was, it white. was white. Yeah, it's blue, navy blue and then white. So clearly that's the outside so, of the panel. And when it came to squaring that up, we made sure there wasn't any white showing. Yeah, there was going to be no white in my seam allowance. Right, or coming out of my single allowance. Okay, I've got a couple other panel things here. But one of the things I want to mention with this is as we do borders, you guys, and we frame panels, measuring is not an option. No, no, don't there's just no floating. There's no, you have to measure. Yeah. Okay, and you have to do that. We, we measure from the middles. That way we average it out right. and we make it a square. So, this being up high, I can show you a little bit. When we're deciding how long these two outer borders need to be for this panel, we're gonna take a tape measure and measure from right here down to right here. I don't wanna measure the sides because this might be a quarter of an inch longer, this might be a half an inch shorter, it doesn't matter. We're gonna measure down the center because that's our truest measurement. And we're gonna cut these two borders to that size, pin the centers, Pin the edges, work the rest of it in. Because that's the right way to do borders. And it's always the right way to do but borders on, on panels. It's even more important. Right. There's no floating. Um, I have actually done a few panels lately, or had to work with a few quilts lately, where they actually made the borders too small and the panel was buckly full. And that makes it a big problem with quilting. So the borders have to be the right size. But you know, and you may think, well, I want my quilt to be, I want this to be 42 inches long. So that's how long I'm going to cut my borders. You know, if it's 42 and 3 eighths, life will go on. You know, I would rather have it be the right size than make the panel try and shrink. Yeah. Okay. So another type of panel is the panels that we use to cut up in blocks. This panel is these cute little animals inside the eyeglasses right here are the panel blocks. And so we've got our frame that's printed on the panel, but the same thing, when we're going to piece these on the outside, you gotta make sure the measurements are right. You don't, we don't, we don't float. And one thing we dealt with this panel this last week with a customer and employee, and just outside this little white frame right here, there's polka dots. And when she first went to trim these up, she's getting too much polka dot on the top and not enough on the bottom. So it was going to show up in her seam allowance. And what we came up with as a solution was make this outer border just a little bit bigger and trim this down. But as a centering idea, instead of trying to center it on the animal, we're like, 
Trying we're going to base it on the frame. So with any panel you're working with, find the things that are going to stand that's important. Out. Right. That's What's the noticeable. most important? What's the most noticeable? What does your eye go to? You know, because that's how you can determine what's going to be too distracting and what's not. You know, something's going to totally throw you off when it's if it's showing like a quarter of an inch polka dot on top of those animals and frames. Or like on the navy one, any of that white border coming through, that would have been noticeable. Gonna, we don't want to see that. So we don't want to see it. Okay, so looking ahead, I'll talk about those in a minute. This is one of our national parks panels. Like we have about six different parks right now in stock. Zion Glacier, Yosemite, Yellowstone, of course. I forget what A couple others. Anyway, okay, so what you can see on this panel is we have... The printed poster is what these are, and then about two inches of printed frame, and then the white selvage, and then the white between where the panels were printed mm -hmm. um, to be cut in between. So the question is, what do you want to show? I decided on my Yellowstone one, clearly, to leave part of this cream frame and let it be its own stop border because that's awesome. Well, it's, it's one less stop border. It's an easy stop, stop border. Stop doesn't mean you need to. You don't have to do that. You could trim it so that the yellow, like on this one, the yellow would butt right up against that. Our border fabric. Border fabric or whatever it is you're going to do. So, so it's up to you. You need to decide what you want to show on your panel because it's, it's yours. You it's yours you and you can do it your own way. Now, one trick, if you're finding something really skewampus in a panel where it got really tugged, really I'm supposed to be making rectangles that are about seven and a half inches wide by 11. And I mean, I'm dealing with shapes like this. That, that's, not a, that's, that's not a rectangle, it's a parallelogram. So what I, was, what I did to make this work, because remember, this cotton fabric, it's an organic product. We can, we, because it has been adjusted, we can still adjust it back to what it needed to be. So what I did was I got it nice and not soaked, Wetted, wetted, wetted with some best press. And I just kind of scooted it while it was wet to get it more back into a rectangular shape. And as I got it there, I pinned in place and I used my iron and I pressed it. And it's like blocking a uh, crocheted right. It's like blocking a crocheted product, product, project. project, but with fabric. And I got it back to a rectangle. Because these had, I mean, some of these cards have rounded frames, mm -hmm. some of them have no frame. Um, and so I needed to come up with something that was uniform to make these playing cards. And that worked really well. So even though my panel got tugged and was totally squampus, I managed to make it work. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're dealing with a panel that's really been tugged a little bit, wet it down and a little bit down. Let it start to now. I did not press it while it was like really wet. No. I let it air dry. And the nice thing about letting a starch air dry is it gets stiffer. It gets stiffer. Um, and so it kind of stiffened in that space and then I pressed it really well to hold it. Was it totally square when I was before I cut it? No. But it was squared enough that within my seam allowance, it turned out square. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a good way to adjust, especially right. when you're dealing with... Someday blocks. I'll do a video on how to do that, but yeah, it didn't happen today. Okay, so, but with these ones, so for this one, when I went to trim my panel on this guy, I wanted a fairly even stop order on my quilt. Mm -hmm. And so what I did is you, I measured from the colored line so from this yellow out and I gave him cut myself like one and three quarters I think is what I trimmed it or looks about, about right probably about one and three quarters um because then I would have a one and a half inch finished stop border and then that's how I trimmed all the way around is this a perfect rectangle we've already covered this no, no. but because I trimmed my border essentially to be perfect and then I measured the other borders mm -hmm. any given this kind of it straightens itself self self adjusted it does so we um like if you bought wide backs or something and you know that they can get kind of really off wound one of the things we talk bolt. about is like on one of our long arm machines we roll it back and forth and then it's magically square 
Um, another thing you see people do, the old school method, is you pull on the two different corners, have two different people pulling on it, and it'll bring itself kind of back to square. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we did here. I trimmed it to be what I wanted it to look like, okay? And then I used my borders well, to magically right? make it square. And because it's an organic product, this is a living product, it will adjust. I can make it, it adjust. And so you can straighten it out. Now, I was, I was initially with this panel going to do the same thing here with these two fabrics. But then I thought to myself, no. We're going to talk later, not today, but at another time about panel quilts. Now you can take a quilt that's like this, which is a one yard panel, it's 36 by 44 before it's trimmed, and make it a much, a much quilt. larger quilt. I'm still not making it bed sized because it's meant to be a throw, but we're going to add some fun details around it and turn it into something that is a little more than a one hour project because right. that's it's, kind of more like it's going to be slightly more complicated but it's going to fit within still letting the panel be the star and um making everything fit yeah okay so another thing i wanted to show you there's all sorts of different panels out there right okay so i brought a couple this one i know y'all have probably seen it um, this panel is actually canvas right here and it's on a 60 inch wide bolt. Yes. So it's 36 by 60. So it's a nice big, I think it's 54, but oh, yeah, so it's ish. a nice big panel. It's meant to be a mat for your kids to play on. I went to make it a little bit bigger and partially because my son insisted on a green border. And so I put a big green border on it and quilted it. And I actually went ahead and put Minky on the back also because he insisted. And um, so it's a play mat slash uh, blanket. blanket. Um, so that's another type of panel. The last one I want to show you is still in the bag here. Okay, so this is another National Parks panel. But this is a two yard by, I mean 60. it's huge. What? It's 72 by 60. 72 by 60. So this is a, the type of a panel that becomes a quilt all by itself and becomes a big quilt pretty much all by itself. We have used it quite a bit with other customers as the back of their quilt. Yes. Also, it would be very cool. I plan on putting a couple borders on it. This is a big panel. So panels come all different. This one is clearly digitally printed. Uh, um, what do we want to tell them about digitally printing? One thing about digital printing, one way to know that it's digital printed, is if you look at the selvage, there are no colored dots. See, see the lack of colored dots there? It's because there's no screen printing going on here. So that's a really good way to know that something that's multicolored is digitally printed. Plus, if uh, it has more than 24 colors, it's right. digitally printed. The reason they digitally print is because they are limited to 24 colors in the traditional fabric screen printing process. Um, so if you want a lot of variation in color, you're going to have to go digital. Mm -hmm. um, one thing about digital printing is sometimes it tends to get more pulling when you're sewing on it. You'll so, notice the thread pulls a little you'll bit You'll notice more. little thread pulls a little bit. Okay. And that's because go. the the color is very much on the surface. It's now, not as saturated. It's not as saturated. There's one. I found one. So the here's the trick for working with that. Sharp needle. Sharp needle. New, New needle. needle. Yeah. Jeans. Um, because that way you're going to get less pulling. When I'm working on a project, whether it's on my regular domestic sewing machine when I'm holding it. or when I'm get, putting something on the long arm and I know it's digital for sure a new needle I mean we change our needles regularly anyway but mm -hmm. that is definitely a new needle project because I want to minimize pulling there's gonna be some and it's gonna happen because it's kind of a fact with dealing with uh, digital prints digital prints are great but it's definitely something that right if you see I it, have to look really close I'm like let's say there's, there's one there's right a there. couple and I can find them because I know what I'm looking for. But once Dude. I took it off the long arm and it got crinkly, now it's noticeable. Especially also, once you wash way, it. This pan does awesome. But my map back is on here. That's back in stock in case if you're wondering. And if you want it, you better hurry because everybody buys it as a back. So it sells five yards at a time. Well, it's a map of Yellowstone. It's pretty awesome. It is. Um, so, all right. Do you want to trim that? Sure, we can trim it. I'll move this stuff out of the way. Yeah, we should probably get fabric off the cutting mat. This quilt, we took it down because it was up here from last week. 
but it's a panel quilt too, so also know. a panel. Worked out. This is a panel that had a bunch of different blocks on it, and so I took my big ruler, like my 18 inch square, and marked out exactly where I wanted to cut on it mm -hmm. in order to, it's almost like fussy cutting a panel. Right. To get those blocks cut right. All right, I'm going to move so that you can cut. I'll cut Because it's hand. your panel. That's true. Oh, while she starts that, you guys, uh, this bag that we tried to make here last week, it's all done and it's adorable. Um, it is going to be our free pattern in our newsletter this that should come out this weekend. So keep an eye out for that. Well, okay, one thing she's not doing it right now, it doesn't hurt to press it first. Always press first. Always, 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 always. So what you gotta see is kind of what you have to work with. So how big is the cream border on that? So my cream border here is like exactly two inches wide. Now and it depends I need, on how your panel is trimmed, though. Right. It, was, it depends on how things are trimmed. Like, but like Liz said before, if we're if you end up dealing with a, a I shouldn't say a weird measurement, a slightly non-traditional or not easy measurement, you can say, you know what, I'm going to do one and seven eighths. But you know what else I could do right here? I could come right in here and say, nope, I want a quarter of an inch because I don't want to see any of the cream. And honestly, if I wanted to get rid of all of the cream here, I, I would like pop an that into an inch. eighth of an inch. Because if I'm intentionally cutting off this cream kind of outer border here, if and I only do a quarter of an inch and my seam gets even a little scant, you're because my you. stop border is dark blue, you're going to see it. It's going to scream at me. And I don't want that to happen. So if I'm going to get rid of this entirely, which I think I am, well, she's making that exactly the decision now. So. Right. Well, and it's mine. I can do what I want. I'm going to go ahead and trim it at an eighth of an inch. Now, you may have noticed as I'm going along here, I'm kind of tugging the fabric out a little bit to put it where I want, rather than trying to pick up the ruler and straighten it out. I'm just tugging at my fabric. So as I turn this corner here and lay this out, as straight as I can okay I am it's kind of like squaring up a quilt you don't need to go the whole length you don't need to I'm, I'm only working a bit of it at a time but I'm not gonna get up my pick my ruler up here and rotate it to try and move it out I'm just gonna nudge things along you call it scratching the fabric right we just kind of scratch at it we don't pick it up and move it um, when I'm looking right here this, 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 this is not square. This is not, it's, it's more of an 85 degree angle and not a 90 degree angle. Guess what? It's going to be fine. It's going to work because our borders, if our, our borders right, it squares it up. Our borders are going to be square. And once we put those on and tug and straighten it out, we're going to end up with a rectangle because it's an organic product. And we can. And I should it. clarify, by organic, I don't mean... Grown yeah. without chemicals. Grown without chemicals. I mean, as in living. Natural. It's not man-made. It's, man -made. it's not plastic. Yeah. It's not a polyfiber. It's not a... Right. That's what we mean by organic. It is a living product. Or, or made out of something that was living. Right. Now, cotton's probably dead at this point, but, you know. Kind of like your leather. Right. Now, leather doesn't really adjust, but, you know. Well, it can be stretched. It can be stretched. stretched. You can do all sorts of things with leather. Yeah. All kinds of things with leather. 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 I don't do much with leather because I have limited time. Plus, leather's expensive. See, again, that one was it's, about an 85 degree angle. This one's about a 95 degree angle. It's going to be fine. Which is great. That, that, that math balances out. It does. That's good math. It's about five degrees off one way and then five degrees the opposite on the other side. Guess what? We can average out. Right. Tug a little bit and we're good to go. I know we get you guys with math. Sorry. But cool math is good math. Yeah. My my son was telling his vice principal yesterday. He, he had a bit of an issue at school that um, he doesn't like math and he doesn't need math. And his principal is trying to come up with ways to show him. No, you use math. When you grow up, you'll need math. I was like, yeah, I tell him I use math every day. That's what I do. <laughs> I may have a job as an artisan, but... 
But we used lots and lots and lots of math. Lots of math. All day, every day. Which I know is overwhelming for some people. But it's nice to break it down into little equations. I think part of the reason I like to point out the math we're using is because it, it justifies that the mom who's pushing her kids to do math at school thing. Like, see, see, I use it. It's important. Right? Yeah. Kids like math, so. Yeah. Charlotte likes math. She was home, my 10 year old was homesick the other day and decided that she should learn how to multiply decimals. Okay. Because, you know, that's what you do when you're homesick. No, you watch TV. <laughs> we used to watch, like, The Price is Right. Right? Like, Back in the day before Netflix, it's like, wow, this is what like daytime television what has daytime to offer. TV. Huh? It's a horrible game show. <laughs> That's what you did when you stayed home in school, was watch things. Right. The price you grew right. up in the 80s and 90s. Am I aging myself with that? Yeah. <laughs> tell you exactly how old I am. Right. Okay. You know Bob Barker. You think the price is right as somebody other than Bob Barker. You may be younger right. than me. All right. You're definitely younger. Okay, so hers is going to turn out totally different because she essentially cut off her cream board. Well, we can't make twin quilts. Not really. But we do all the time. <laughs> That's the problem. But so, but she left that eighth of an inch. And I know right up here you can see that. And what that also does is it helps make sure she's, she's really squaring this up when she doesn't have something to work with. It's like when I square up a quilt, I measure from here. And I know that this needs to be about five and a half inches. It's not where the edge of the fabric is so no. much for me. It's I want five and a half inches from here to here. And that's how I square my quilt up. Right. When I'm trimming. And she just did the same thing with the panel. She squared the panel. Right. And by the time I add some borders, it's going to turn out really square. But the price is right in the days of our lives. Exactly. Right. I know days. And that's from back in back in the day, the day. So I'm gonna again? go home and add a few borders and some, well, I'm gonna add she a border a other and some stars and some other things. Once again, to measure for borders, I'm gonna say it one more time. Here to here, okay? We don't measure the bottom, we don't measure the top, we measure from here to here. And if you want to get three measurements along and find the average, also okay. If you like the math, totally fine. But we want the same length of border on the top and the bottom, and then once again on the left and the right. Okay? And we don't want one an eighth of an inch longer than the other because that's what it measured up to. Okay? We want to create the average. It's an organic product. We can stretch just a little, and it's going to work out great if we do that just right. All right? And the way we pin on a border, again, pin the sides, pin the center. How do you find? The center, you find the center of both of them, pin those together, pin the outside edges, and then work the rest of it in. That's how we pin on a border. We've done a video on it before. I'll have to, we're going to end up doing another one later because we get asked for it all the time. Right. Um, but that's, it's really the trick to making any quilt square, whether it's a panel quilt, whether it's just yeah. a pieced quilt that you're adding a border to. We're not really dead set on there's only one right way to do things. Except for, borders, Except for borders, in which case there's only one right way to do things. And that is to measure your borders and make sure you get it right. Okay? Yeah, really, we're like, oh, there's all kinds of methods. Except for floating borders. That's floating not a borders method. is not a method. <laughs> not if you want it square when you're done. Okay? Okay. Well, so this is some basics on panels. How to square your panel. How to make it square when it's not. Because it's not. It's not. But it works out great, and they turn out beautiful, and... Seriously, sometimes you guys, the quick quilt is the answer because you need something fun and fast. I think I did this in an hour a few weeks ago in right. between other projects. It's a really big leader ender. It's a really um, big leader and ender. <laughs> That's what these are. Um, but they are really nice quick quilts, these big panels, especially when you need a quick gift for somebody. Um, mm -hmm. Because the beauty of it, I mean, it's like our bloom and grow, which I threw it's somewhere over there. Um, we kitted up all three of those panels with a stop border and outer border. It's what like are the kids? 30, like seven, thirty-five bucks. Thirty-five dollars for an entire quilt and top about this size, and, and that's what you could make this one for is about that same price, right? And, and so, so it's like, yeah, the whole you, quilt. You need a quick like baby shower gift, or somebody's got a birthday or something, and you want to make them a quilt, and you want it cost effective. 
it's a great way to go when you need limited time or resources. So. Resources into it. Because, you know, we can't always, uh, we can't. not everybody can get a $400 quilt. Well, and not everybody wants, I, I've got a sister-in-law who, you know, she tells me, well, you know, you can buy blankets at Target, right? I'm like, yeah, that's why you get gift cards. <laughs> but, you know, that's the whole idea where it's, um, sometimes people are the type that will appreciate it and they're going to love it and you put a lot of time and effort and money into it. And other times people are, uh, they'll appreciate a blanket. So we do a simpler project for them because that helps us not sit here and be offended that they didn't appreciate all of our time and money and effort. Exactly. All right. But that's it for panels for today. We'll show you what we end up doing with the big guy and what Jen does with Zion and, you know, our Instagram and Facebook feeds eventually. Right. In the next few weeks. Don't worry. I only cut out three quilts yesterday. Yes, for real. Um, so the finished dimensions of this quilt are a good question. Probably um, about 50 by 60 ish. Right, you added 10, 12 to the sides. Yeah, 50 by 60 ish. I don't know. <laughs> Definitely. -ish. It fit on a 60 wide minky. Well, actually, I didn't put minky on the back of this. My other one fit on a 60 wide minky. So 50 ish by 60 ish. Yeah, I it's, should. That's nice and get out a tape measure, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I measured it when I put it on the long arm. <laughs> you don't store all that information. In it's probably in my head somewhere. I'll remember it on my drive home, but at the moment, I don't. Anyway. All right. Well, We're thanks good. for watching, and we'll talk to you next week. All right. See ya.